you've probably heard the phrase before, fire, ready, aim. And that means start taking action before you're actually ready. And so many people are spending all of their time trying to aim aim, aim, aim. I'm not really ready to pull the trigger yet. I'm just going to keep aiming. I'm going to do more research. I'm going to keep aiming. I'm going to do more research. And my approach has always been very different. My approach has always been, I don't have time to sit around and think about this much. I have to be taking action generally because I was flat broke. I grew up in what I would call kind of a, a middle-class working poor family. Uh, my family, we always had food on the plate, but my mom at one point even remembers having two pairs of socks. She kind of had to wash one by hand um, every day because she was wearing the other pair and like all my clothes growing up came from the thrift store and so so like we had a roof over our heads and we had enough but boy money money really never stretched and all those money doesn't grow on trees and there's not enough month at the end of the money and all those kinds of phrases were very common growing up so I've just had this drive since a young age that I have to figure out this money game and I knew the internet was an approach for me so I've kind of habituated the process of taking action first, blazing forward full speed, and oftentimes closing down projects and wrapping things up when they went awry and trying again and trying something new. And that has served me greatly. And here's what most people are, here's why waiting to take action and only aiming and not firing is a gigantic problem because you're not building any skills. And every one of these, when I go through this little list of my past domains and explain some of the past domains of businesses that I've attempted, Every one of them, I've learned a ton and I've been able to apply what I learned, what didn't work to the next venture. And then what didn't work there, I was able to apply it to the next venture and the next venture. And at this point, I found that what I will call nearly miraculous convergence of my experiences, all these things I learned that wouldn't work. And I finally had the, the gusto and got it right and landed on something and went long enough and got the kind of feedback that was in alignment with me. It feels good. I'm having fun putting out the content, so I'm going to keep going with it. That all happened through these challenges and through these failures. You know, they say um, when the light bulb was being invented, he had found 10,000 ways that did not work, right? He found 10,000 failed experiments of the light bulb before he found the one that did work. And it was going through all of those failed experiments that actually led him to the understanding of what was required to truly make it work. So my goal with this video is to help you understand that taking action, choosing a niche, something you think is close enough to in your heart and close enough to a passion and has a, a decent chance for success that taking action and running forth with it is a very, very good idea because you're going to learn a lot. You're going to start publishing content. You're going to learn how that goes. You're going to learn what your best method of communication is, whether that's podcasting, videos, or the written word. You're going to learn about WordPress. You're going to learn about search engine optimization. You're going to have to deal with keyword research. All those little bits and pieces are all skills that are going to help you greatly on your path forward. Now, my little list we're going to go through goes all the way back to the late 1990s. It's not a conclusive list, but I'm going to share not just the domain names, but I want to give you a little idea of what they were and essentially why they didn't work and what I learned from them. So you can maybe learn from a list of my mistakes that I made, but even though that just called them mistakes, they all built up the kind of knowledge base, the understand understandings and the skill set that has that I'm leveraging today in this exact video and on this platform and on my wife's platform, etc. So the first one was BayAreaShows.com. I loved music. I used to go to uh, punk rock shows in the Bay Area where I grew up. Every weekend, I would go two, three, four shows a week every time I could. There was no coherent list of places you could go find what was going on at the, the very small clubs, not just the Fillmore and the big, the big venues, but like the bottom of the hill, the Gilmore. There was a printed list that used to circle around on Telegraph Avenue in Berkeley, and I wanted to make a web version of that, and I wanted to build a community. Um, the community erupted in in, in bickering between a few people and I literally didn't have the persistence but in this I found a partner who was a web developer and he coded everything by hand in Dreamweaver and I literally sat there in his bedroom as he coded it giving him instructions on what we wanted and where and I watched how he coded a website and that was my first experience of seeing how a website was coded how he made the graphics and how he built tables and all the horrible stuff we had to deal with in Dreamweaver it proved to me that it's possible to build a website from home on a home computer um, in your side time.
Poker Chip Palace. Um, I grew up playing poker. My mom taught me how to play poker at the age of three. Uh, playing deck of cards is something that has always been around in my house. My family goes back to, to farming roots in North Dakota, and boy, they sit around and play a lot of cards through winter in North Dakota. So I learned the basic hands of poker at a very young age. My family at gatherings has always played poker, and I'm a pretty competent poker player. Um, I, I understand the strategy. I'm really quite good at it. And during poker's craze of, I believe, 2000. 2003, 2004, before it was banned in the United States, I was playing a lot of online poker. I was winning tournaments. I had a vision of maybe paying for my college um, student loan debt through poker tournaments, but I was still kind of interested in this idea of making money online because I had already made the money with the MySpace gig in 2003 at this point. So I went and started to build PokerChipPalace.com, which was essentially like a web store where you could buy the different poker chips. They were all drop shipped or affiliate links, but I laid it out to look like a store. Store. Again, this was in Dreamweaver. This drove me nearly to insanity learning Dreamweaver, but I got even better at graphics and I got better at learning how to FTP things up to the server and kind of server management and the real basics of things. It never took off. I never made a single sale from it. I wrapped it all up. Uh, around that same time, I started GetRichSomeday.com, which was kind of like my thought of uh, a make money or a wealth type blog. That never got off the ground, but I tried and I was building that in Dreamweaver also. Um, around that time, I learned WordPress and I started to get the basics of WordPress that came onto my scene and the process of building sites became a little easier. I started leftcoastcartel.com. I was living in New Mexico, going to school. I thought like a California cool kid, I'm gonna bring this California brand to New Mexico. Uh, print on demand shirts weren't a thing. So I was doing runs of 500 to 1000 shirts and literally rolling them up based on sizes, carrying them in a backpack to, to school parties, college parties and selling for $10 a shirt out of my backpack. That was a failed experiment and a lot of uh, a big portion of my $50,000 in student loan debt that I have actually went into that t-shirt business that um, didn't actually get off the off the ground at all. I realized I didn't like dealing with inventory. Moving on, PLR articles. I actually bought and owned PLR articles. Uh, it was a word that came out in an early newsletter I was following, and he was talking about this new idea of private label rights articles coming out. So I bought the domain. Uh, a friend and I kind of co-built it. I was reselling private label article packs, um, made maybe five thousand dollars or so off of that really got the experience of running the front end the marketing offering a product click buy through the e-store plugin that I teach in my DIY sales funnel that was the plugin I used to actually manage those sales and we just delivered a batch of private label rights articles um, that whole world of PLR stuff just is kind of sleazy and it just doesn't work like it was it wasn't authentic it wasn't actually delivering value to anybody it was just kind of selling rubbish stuff I had the right domain name right PLR articles was the most searched phrase because that was the name of the thing. I just happened to be an early mover buying that domain name. So I ranked really well when people searched for PLR articles back in 2007, 2008, they found my website. I ended up selling that domain for about $8,000. My friend and I split the money and that was it. And we wrapped that one up. Snowboardbums.com. I love snowboarding. I've always loved snowboarding. I'm pretty good at it. Um, I've lived uh, right against ski resorts before. The goal of the idea of that site was to do a product review site on snowboard stuff. I'm not a writer. I, I kind of learned that. I was able to put in these, these interesting new plugins on WordPress that were doing price comparisons. So I could I could put up a post about a goggle, right? Like the Smith IO goggles or whatever they were, and it could run a price comparison and it would pull from affiliate links all of the different options. So it's like, oh, get it on Amazon for 147, get it on REI for 127, and it would be a price compare widget where all of those links in the price compare widget would actually be my affiliate links. So my goal was being, my value I was trying to bring was to compare all of the prices, but I never really dug in and did all the content. I tried to partner with a few friends who enjoyed snowboarding a lot and it just never took off. Again, content was the big challenge on that one. I still own the domain. Don't do anything with it. Don't even think it's alive. Um, Melanieandmiles.com. We've tried network marketing and in network marketing, you brand yourselves first. Melanie and I were working to brand ourselves as the Melanie and Miles brand. Uh, that didn't really work. Straightforwardseo.com. That's the site I used to essentially was the front end when I was selling service. Services. I still have that. It's actually probably still live, but I haven't looked at it or done anything with that for years. And that was when I was selling SEO services. People were like, oh, where can I learn more about you? Straightforward SEO, all WordPress based, really, really simple. Um, again, I, I had built out enough content on the front end, a little bit of marketing on the front end. And then the goal was to give them the options of the packages, let them click and buy. Um, but it was almost more of a um, credibility factor when I was talking to local meetups, uh, to local groups. Um, the laptopstartup.com, cashflow and leads.com. Uh, 
www.healthyandabundant.com, healthyandabundant.com, interdimensionalschoolofthought.com, nmassetmanagement.com. That was the front end for my real estate flipping. Um, so I don't know, that's, that's like 10, 12. And all of those, these are not just the domains. I bought over and owned over a thousand domains, right? These are only the ones that I actually built something. I actually took some sort of action forward, whether it was the old school days on Dreamweaver and doing all the graphics and all the FTP myself, or whether it was learning on the kind of WordPress and what we do now. And obviously I'm not even including the domains that my wife and I are using and being successful with now. Now, do I think you need to go through that much trial and error to get to the point? I don't, I really don't think you do. I think the technology is easier now than it ever has been before. WordPress makes things super simple. And honestly, I didn't have a channel like this and I didn't have any money to buy courses. I didn't have anyone really showing me a proven path. I had, I went through trial and error full on with the blinders on and brute force. I'm going to figure that out. And this is why I believe, you know, my wife says the reason I've created this YouTube channel is I'm really trying to put out that content that 18 year old and 22 and 24 year old miles wishes he had access to. And I do think that's partially true because I was always frustrated and disappointed that no one through my path of all of this, no one seemed to be willing to help unless I was going to pay them 197 or 997 or $2,000. And when I finally had enough money and mustered up the ability to buy those things, they were often a complete letdown. And I learned more from my trial and error, but I really want to help guide you a little bit. And my goal again with reading that off and going through this is to help you understand that like fire ready aim. I just went, I was like poker chips. Cool. I love poker. I'm in on poker. I'm gonna go for it. All of a sudden like poker gets banned by the government, right? The president says no more online poker in the United States of America. And the poker chip craze kind of dwindles out and I was just at my wits end with Dreamweaver on to the next thing, on to the next thing. And that's really how I've approached this. Um, Snowboardbums.com is another one I think is a great example of uh, a niche site. I think there's a ton of potential there still. And I think they're, you know, those kinds of sites do really well. Um, and it's all led me to this point here and now, which is through all of my experiences and all of my trials and all of my, my mistakes I've made, I actually understand a few things that work. That's what my wife and I really dialed in with her business and what we're still doing. We found something we could create on our own and sell on our own. We found something we could create on our own that gets a pretty good opt-in rate that we can give away for free to grow our list and we're still doing it. We're creating these same things every month. Our members get all of them, right? They just pay one monthly fee. They get everything we ever create. Our normal big list can buy things one off. We offer them one off and we just continue to bring in new people to get our free thing, get them on our list, build a relationship, offer them the new paid ones as they come out. We're literally doing the same thing that we've been doing on that website essentially since 2013, 2014. So five, four or five years, we're doing the same thing. We're not getting crazy. We're not changing the model. We found something that works. We're going to stick with that and do what works. Now with the Miles Beckler brand in 2016 in August, I started putting out these videos and this stuff is working. 52,000 plus subscribers as of this recording with 351 or so videos in about 20 months. This is working. It's generating positive cash flow. I'm having fun. I feel like I'm being of service to you. I feel like I'm helping you. I'm getting a ton of great feedback in the comments of people who are like, dude, I took action on what you said. It's working. I'm making sales. I'm growing lists. I actually have a funnel now. Thank you. That is what really, really kind of drives me to keep going. And that's the positive feedback that, um, is reinforcing that, that I've found my niche here. I have found what I am to do. I have really found the one thing I'm thinking about now is can I create a brand or, um, a location or maybe an inner circle where people who are on the path and making a thousand dollars a month, I can help them optimize what they're doing to get them to the 10 K a month. And people who are making 10 K a month, optimize them to help them get to a hundred K a month. I've already helped a few viewers here on the channel go from 10,000 a month to a hundred thousand dollars a month, which is, it's amazing for me to be able to help people grow to that level. But a lot of why I can help them grow to that level is how many different ways and times I've failed and that all happened. And that's all blessings. Each one of those failures was a blessing for me because I just jumped in with both feet. I'm in, I'm buying it. I'm going to build it, whatever. I got to do this. I figured out some of them. I went three, four, five, six months. Some of these things I worked for several years before kind of realizing that it wasn't in alignment, but I learned a ton. Some of them brought in some cash flow. A lot of them didn't bring in cash flow. They all brought in real world, tangible skills, real world, tangible experience that is all being applied to my wife's two brands and to this brand here and to the future brands that I'm bringing into reality because I'm just getting started at this point. So I hope this gives you the freedom to take action, 
right? If you're not taking action and you're stuck in indecision and you don't know what niche to go into, just, man, if you're teaching your kids, if your kids are in baseball, right? And you're, you're teaching them little league and you're helping your son learn how to effectively swing proper to hit singles, doubles and triples and not swinging for the fences. And maybe that's what you do. Maybe you create a blog around how you're helping your teach your kid how to play baseball, right? That could be it. You're teaching baseball tactics to parents of kids in Little League. I don't know, but look into your lifestyle and find something that fits in with your lifestyle. When I lived next to ski resorts on the North Shore of Lake Tahoe and I was skiing 80 or snowboarding 80, 90, 100, 120 days a year, snowboard bumps fit in with that, right? Like it just blended with my lifestyle. I don't live there anymore. I'm not all that infatuated with it anymore. I'm cool that I moved on, but that's what you need to look at is what just makes enough sense right now for you to commit so you can get on the path to creating because you need to start creating. You gotta be creating content. If you're going down the paid traffic route, you need to create a funnel and you need to create your ads. If you're going down the organic traffic route, you need to create a blog, a website on WordPress. You need to turn it into a funnel and you need to build an audience through more content, whether it's podcasting, the written word, or the videos. I've laid out all of the steps to do. You just kinda gotta get on the horse and start going down the path. If it's the perfect path or the exact right path for you at this moment, honestly, whether it ultimately works and creates the lifestyle income you desire or not, it is the right step for you to take now because you'll learn things from it and success is on the other side of failure. Most people aren't taking action because they don't want to fail. They're like, okay, if I choose the wrong niche, that's going to be a failure and I don't want to fail. I want to do things that are success. I only want to do success things. I don't want to do failure things. When you realize that success is on the other side of failure and you must go through failure to ultimately get to success, that is when you're empowered with the ability to fire ready aim, to take action, to get going, you pivot, you aim, you adapt as you go. But really that action taking is the ultimate key to everything. I hope this has been helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you thought any of these were goofy or funny or whatever. I'd love to hear your comments. This is a little um, cross section of my past that got me to this point today. Uh, I feel blessed for all of the years and months and the, the struggles and the hard work and the the, the frustrations that I experienced on every one of these because they made me a better marketer, they made me a better person, they made me a better entrepreneur. And we become better entrepreneurs and better marketers through our challenges, right? You gotta use hot, hot, intense fire to forge metal to make it stronger than ever, right? Iron sharpens iron. So it's okay to be challenged. And if you feel challenged with choosing your niche, jump in, choose something that sounds logical enough, Go for it. Throw your hat over the fence and start creating content. See what happens. Adapt as you go and pivot. You will ultimately find your path to success. If you take enough action, you're constantly surveying what's going on. You're being as strategic as you can. You're paying attention. You're growing a list. You're being of service to an audience. When you focus on all of those things, you can't lose, my friend, because you'll at least learn those things that you can apply to the next venture. And eventually, you will find that one that is in perfect alignment with your family, with your lifestyle, with your heart, with your soul. And that's when magic happens. It might not be your first one. It sure wasn't for me. It wasn't for my wife. My wife tried five separate websites before she landed on the one that actually clicked for her. So she took a little shorter path. I was able to help focus her a little more. Maybe you could do it in two. Maybe you could do it in three. Maybe you could do it one. Maybe it takes you six. Either way, doesn't matter. Maybe it takes you 10. Is it worth it in the long run? For me, the lifestyle I've created, the abundance I've created, the lifestyle freedoms I've created, it, it's so worth it. It's incredible. Like the other option was working a corporate job for all these years. That's, that's the unacceptable option for me, for my personality, seeing what that led to in my family, my father committing to a corporate world for years, getting uh, fired two years before his full vesting for his retirement. Um, I saw what that created. So I knew I had to go a different way. And this has been my path. I went a lot longer than expected. I apologize about that. But if you watched the end, hashtag good job, you did it. Um, get on the path, my friend, really, you can do this. If you haven't started taking action, I implore you to begin taking action and to know that even if it's imperfect action, that's perfect. Imperfect action is what you want to do. That's all you can do. It's only through hindsight that you can connect all the dots and it all makes sense looking back. But in the moment, you're just doing the best you can with what you've got. So go forth, start creating content, start building your funnels, grow your list, be of service to the audience. I'm going to continue to put out as many helpful videos as I can for you three times a week. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, hit the bell so you get notified when the new videos come out. Any questions for me, any jokes or any random comments for my random ass uh, list of uh, domain names that I've had through the 
the years. Hit me in the comments. I look forward to those comments. And give me a thumbs up, share it, embed it, do what you do, put it in a Facebook group. I don't know. Engage with the video how you want, um, if you want. And thanks for watching to the end. I do appreciate it. I appreciate you. I know you can do this. You just got to get on the path. You really got to get on the path to success and realize, you know, 10,000 failed attempts to figure out the one light bulb that works and you and I are able to light our entire houses, our entire world are lit because that individual went through 10,000 failed attempts. Imagine if he tried twice and gave up. We'd have no lights. So go shine your light, my friend. You've got this. You can do this. I'll catch you on the next video.